So you've just started editing your own videos on Adobe Premiere Pro, but you're finding it a bit tricky to get a good color grade going. But don't worry, in this video, I'm gonna teach you a few basic foundations on how to color grade. And with these foundations, you can take them pretty far and you'll be able to color grade anything. Yep, anything. Hey, welcome to the channel, my name is Harris. I'm a photographer, filmmaker from London, and I like to color grade every single video that I make. Whatever I film, I grade it. Color grading can be really daunting, especially for me when I first started color grading, there was a hundred of tutorials out there on YouTube, and they all have a very different technique. Now, I've learned my own kind of recipe, my own way of doing color grading throughout the years. And there is some basic things that you should always be doing with your color grade. And with these basic foundations, you can color grade pretty much anything, any kind of video project, big or small. With these basic foundations, you'll be able to have a solid color grading foundation. Like I said, you can take this really far, but for the sake of Adobe Premiere, let's just jump into it and we can start dabbling with this. So, I have a few clips from a New Zealand travel video here that I'll be using for this example of this tutorial. Now, typically what I like to do is have my project ready and edited, and then I'll do my color grading last, because the last thing you wanna do is make a major change after you color graded, and it just becomes a mess. Also, save a copy before you start color grading. Go to File, Save a Copy, because when you start color grading, if Premiere Pro crashes, you ain't gonna be a happy bunny. So our timeline is ready, we're ready to edit. First thing we're gonna do is basic adjustments. We're just gonna tweak each individual file and correct the exposure. Now, the best way that I like to correct the exposure is by using scopes. Now to find scopes, what you need to do is click on the color tab panel, then go to window, and you're gonna go to Lumetri scopes. Now the first one you'll see is RGB waveforms. Now these are super cool and they're really easy to understand, especially if you come from a photography background like myself. Essentially, what you wanna do is have your white points and black points, and you want the clip to kind of spread evenly across the board along the graph. Your white points are essentially gonna be the top, and your black points are gonna be at the bottom. So what a lot of people like to do, if you've ever heard the reference, crush your blacks and expose for the, the white highlights, that's what they're referring to. The waveform is gonna be an objective reference to how your exposure is kind of conveyed on screen. So for example, if my monitor has it calibrated in one way, the video might appear differently on someone else's laptop screen. So these are really a great tool to help you correct your exposure for all types of screens. You might be editing in the dark at night and you might think it's all bright and then you watch it on someone else's screen the following morning and it looks really dark and you don't know why is my film looking dark. This is gonna help prevent any of those issues. And you know you'll have a good exposure if the waveforms are spread evenly across the graph. Remember, it's just a reference point. So for example, this clip right here, we're just gonna crush the blacks a little bit, bring up the whites, maybe tweak the shadows a little bit, bring down the highlights so it's not too harsh, and then add a bit of contrast for taste. And we just keep doing this for all the different clips. So when you play it back on the timeline, it looks pretty smooth. And just in case you're wondering in how to change your white balance, use the eyedrop tool to check the white balance and just play it through, make sure the clips seem at the right warmth and coldness throughout the timeline. Remember, try to get everything done in camera to the best of your ability because that will ensure that there's less tweaking to do in the timeline. Now that your timeline is correctly exposed, well done. The difficult bit is out the way. When doing this, I typically like to just shut off the music on the timeline and blast whatever music I wanna to listen to, maybe put on a podcast. This could take a while depending on how long your project is, but once this is done, everything else is easy, trust me. It's just gonna be a few more tweaks. Next up, we're gonna be creating our look. So each film or project has its own look. A lot of people like to go for the orange and teal look. So today I'll be teaching you the orange and teal look. And first thing you wanna do is go to the little new item tab in the project folder, click on this little folded paper icon here and select adjustment layer. We're gonna drag that adjustment layer on top of everything on the sequence. Now, whatever you do to the adjustment layer, anything underneath it 
will be affected. Imagine them as layers in Photoshop and you can quickly change between them. And plus it's a good way to take the stress off Premiere Pro and not adding all these different effects to each individual clip. Also to remember to drag the adjustment layer all across the whole timeline so everything's affected. You don't want to have a video playing and all of a sudden someone's having great skin tones and then to no great skin tones. I've seen that on a few YouTube videos. I've done that to some of my YouTube videos. It's not pretty. Also, this is a great opportunity if you have a LUT, for example, to put your LUT. A LUT is basically just a lookup table. So it's almost like a filter, a preset for a type of look that you wanna go for for your film. To add that, you'll basically go to creative, go to look, click on browse, bring in your LUT and boom, your LUT is applied. Now sometimes, well, most of the time, they're actually pretty strong. So you'd always wanna dial it down. For example, this is my own LUT that I made for my New Zealand travel video. I've made it a bit too strong, but you dial it down. And what this LUT particular, just in particular this LUT, it brings down the greens and makes the skin tones pop a lot more. And then from there, you can obviously boost your saturation a little bit, add a bit of sharpening and you're done. I would say that LUTs can be very peculiar and very particular to a certain type of film. So for example, with this LUT, it works really well with leafy environments. So maybe a wedding in a really grand farm or estate, this LUT would work really well. So overall LUTs are great because they give you a great unique look, but not all LUTs fit all images. And what I'm gonna be doing is showing you how to make a classic look that you can make for yourself, basically make your own LUT. Although, quick plug, I do have my own LUTs for sale and I have a PDF showing you how they work and what kind of videos they'll look good for. So, let's go for the orange and teal look. I'm gonna go to color wheel and match. Now, to create the orange and teal look, there's many different ways to do it. I've been using this method, which has worked for me really well. And even if you don't use Premiere Pro and use some other softwares, typically this is how it works. Go to midtones and you're gonna drag up slightly to the orange. And remember, this is not something you're gonna drag all the way to the end. This is gonna be literally like a few millimeters up and down. Now we go to shadows and we add a bit of teal. And I just basically pull it down to the south and you can start to see the shadows getting a bit cooler and it's looking more balanced. And then you just finish off with the highlights, adding a bit of teal till everything's balanced off really well. Now this could look really strong if you've gone a bit overboard or it could look just right. And just finesse, tweak it to the right consistency or look that you like. And you might find that your footage still lacks a bit of color. So maybe bump the saturation up by 10. That could also really do good to your footage. Now that's typically what I like to do. But if the footage is looking a bit too strong and you wanna give yourself a bit more of a unique look, head down to the curves. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the edge off our look. Or you can even do this with your LUT as well. We're just gonna take the edge off of our color look. We're gonna make a key point right here on the graph and a key point right here. And we're just gonna drag down side by side. You could go all the way to the end or you can go all the way to the middle depending on how it affects your footage. And we can go to saturation versus saturation. And what this will do is it will take the edge off the color look that you just created. So if it's a bit too strong on the orange and people are looking a bit too weird, this is a great way to blend it better, make sure that it's not too harsh and everything's a bit more even. And it, sometimes it gives a nice vintage look as well. So that's what I like to do for a lot of my videos, just take the edge off the color grade because color grading needs to be natural. When someone watches a video, they should be, wow, it looks, it looks great. You shouldn't have to think, wow, that grading's a bit too strong. So that's a quick way to kind of get around having a look which could be a bit too powerful. So this is what my footage is looking like right now. You can see that everything's looking good. Like maybe I wanna add a bit more vibrance. Maybe that just left touch, maybe five, just to give a bit more of a pop. But overall, that's looking pretty good. You can play with these settings to whatever taste you might like. Don't forget, a lot of people might shoot in standard picture profile, flat, or even log. So you need to choose which intensity you wanna go for. But with these foundations, you can pretty much color grade anything in Premiere Pro. Don't be afraid to go back through your each individual clips and just do a few tweaks and use the scope to reference if you need to change anything slightly. But congratulations, 
you have now mastered the art of color grading to the bare basic minimum because color grading is endless. There's whole programs and people just dedicated to color grading altogether. I'm not a color grading expert myself. I've just shared with you what I think are the most basic for Premiere Pro and I try to make it really easy for anyone who's getting started in color grading to basically start color grading as soon as possible. What do you think about these techniques? If you're someone who is watching this and color grades regularly and wanted to watch it for kicks, have I done a good duty? Have I served a filmmaker as well? Let me know in the comments down below. And yes, check out my own personal lots in the, I'll leave a little link down below, probably for a few quid or whatever it may be. Check them out, love the feedback. And yeah, let me know what you'd like to have on next video. I know you guys have been asking for a lot of like color grading and video tutorials, so I'm working on that, I'm trying to get them ready for you guys. And yeah, what should I do on my next tutorial? Let me know in the comments down below. It's been a pleasure. Let me know how you get on. Take care, goodbye.